Welcome to another wildlife photography tutorial and today I'm going to give you some tips on how to use a big telephoto lens. Tip number one is trying to find the subject through the viewfinder. Now I know this can be very difficult with a big telephoto lens and a lot of clients I've worked with it's one of the biggest difficulties they have particularly when they just bought a lens, a big lens for the first time. And it's actually trying to find the subject when they get the viewfinder to their eye. So the main thing is you want to try and keep your head still. So rather than just picking the camera up um, and just kind of looking in the general direction, try to keep your eyes on the bird or the animal, whatever it is. Try and keep your eyes on that subject and keep your head still and then bring, bring the camera up to your eye. So try and keep your head still, bring the camera, bring the viewfinder up to your eye and you should, you should find you're pretty close by doing that. It will take a bit of practice and it's going to be more difficult depending on how big the lens is. A 300mm isn't going to be too bad but a 400 and uh, particularly when you get to 500, 600 millimeter, and even bigger that's where it gets much more, much more difficult and if you use extenders as well then it's even more difficult. The other little tip here, so it's like a, a bonus tip, is that when you're trying to find for example a bird on a branch and it's just it's just like a mass of branches uh, and it can be very difficult to pick out. Try and find a reference point. So try and find some kind of reference point that you know roughly whereabouts you're looking. Uh, so it might be like a different coloured leaf. It could be a particular branch that sticks out. Maybe it's got like a, a bit of a different shape to it. That's going to help you and at least gives you a starting point and you can move from there. And it's going to be pretty similar when you want a tripod, just a little bit different. Again, you want to keep your eyes fixed on the subject and then at the same time you're bringing the lens onto the subject, you're bringing your eye to the viewfinder. Slightly out, <laughs> but pretty close. Tip number two, I think this is going to be my favourite tip because I really like this one for some reason. Uh, that is to keep both your eyes open. So a lot of people will just look through the viewfinder and probably close the other eye, look through the with the right eye, close the left eye. I actually prefer to keep both eyes open the whole time. And the reason for that is I can just kind of see what's going on outside of the camera and it helps me to react quicker. So for me, I've used this technique particularly photographing small birds when I'm waiting for them to come on a setup perch and I'll have my right eye looking through the viewfinder on the perch but my left eye is kind of looking outside as well enabling me to react quicker when I see the bird coming. So as you see the bird coming in you can just get ready to react even faster uh, and the other beauty doing it this way using your other eye is that if anything changes you're going to see that so maybe the bird's on its way to the perch but it abandons its approach and it, it disappears or maybe another bird comes in and there's a bit of action if you're just looking through the viewfinder with one eye and uh, your other eye closed then you won't know what's happening so it's a good way of kind of being prepared with the camera but also seeing what's going on outside Tip number three is all about pre-focusing your camera. So when you're waiting for your bird or animal to turn up, try and focus roughly where you're expecting it to be. And the reason for that is when it finally does turn up and you go to take your picture, you go to engage the autofocus, you won't have as much work to do. The lens won't have as much work to do. It won't have as far to travel with the focus. So if you were focusing much further in front or much further away, it would have more work. It'd have to travel more distance. So should make it a little bit quicker. So if you're waiting for a bird to land in a tree, then have it already focused on that tree beforehand, uh, maybe even focused on a specific branch if you know the bird's gonna go in there. Now likewise, if you're photographing mammals, if you know where the animal's gonna arrive, then just pre-focus. You probably need to pre-focus on the ground. Again, it could be automatic or manual. Uh, the biggest difficulty is if you're photographing birds in flight and you've got an idea roughly where they're gonna be. Uh, so obviously it's gonna be against the sky. How do you pre-focus against the sky? In that case, just try there's a red kite flying literally like right past me <laughs> um, just pick a point on the ground so just look on the ground try and judge roughly how far away that is about the same distance as you're expecting the bird to be focus on that then go back to the sky and get ready for the bird to arrive Tip number four is if you're using autofocus with a very thin perch. So again, with small bird photography, if you've got a perch set up and you're waiting for the bird to land, you want to pre-focus on there. It makes it a lot easier. The problem is sometimes the, 
the branch or the twig can be very thin and it can be difficult for the camera to focus on that. So if you go to focus using your automatic focus and you might find it starts hunting, goes in and out, drives you mad, it just doesn't want to focus on it at all. If you find that happening then the simplest thing to do is just to literally just grab hold of the manual focus ring and just use that, tweak that to get the perch in nice focus. You shouldn't need to switch it on to manual to do that, you should just be able to override it. Get the perch in focus then get your finger or back button ready to engage the autofocus again for when the bird lands. Tip number five is to be equidistant between two perches. So here as an example I've got two perches set up as I would often do if I was photographing small birds. Uh, I've got a garden fork on the left there and then I've got uh, like a birch trunk over on the right hand side which was originally for woodpeckers. So if I didn't know which perch I was really going for, then it would be much better to keep my lens trained in the middle. If I focused either on the perch on the left or the perch on the right hand side, then if the bird went onto the opposite perch, I'd have less time to react and I'd have to move the camera more. So much better to focus in the middle and then you've got equal distance to move when the bird arrives. And as well as it making it faster, faster for you to react, it's also gonna be less disturbance, it means you're gonna be swinging the lens around uh, less by doing that. And that can apply as well to a wide range of situations, you know, maybe for example, you were sat in a hide waiting for a deer, you might have a really wide, wide field of view, like a 180 degree view, you don't know where the animal's gonna appear from. If you just go for one side, then you're gonna have a, a big distance of travel if it's on the other side. So I would say as much as possible, try and aim roughly for the middle. If you want to learn more about using a big lens for wildlife photography, then click the link to the video up here. Also, subscribe to my channel. Uh, thanks very much for watching. I'm going to leave because I'm getting bitten to buggery by these midges. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.